Hi, and welcome to another one of my videos. In this one, I'm going to talk about if you've studied a social science, can you get into data analytics or data science? Um, so I just want to, I've been asked this question a couple of times by a few people, uh, mainly because my background is in psychology, um, so social science, and I'm, I've been working in the data analytics space uh, for a long, very long time. So they thought wanted to know how did I get into it and could they get into it? So my simple answer is yes, of course you can. I mean, if, if I've managed to do it, then you should be able to do it. But what are the skills that you need if you're doing social sciences to get into um, uh, data analytics or data science. I mean, most people are interested in uh, data science. So the first thing I tell them is that in most social science, you all have some statistics. There are elements of statistics in social sciences because we, you run experiments and you want to test differences or relationships. So you would have the, the building blocks, I guess, for being a data scientist. The other thing is, um, if you study social sciences, is that you do a lot of research, uh, research methodology or, or how to run experiments. And that's quite key because in data science, you will be asked to run uh, quite a few experiments. So so, um, you know, um, you, you'll be looking at, you know, do, does condition A uh, be is better than condition B or is there a relationship between uh, two variables or two or more variables, um, that kind of stuff. So having that background means that you have a foundation in um, data science, okay? So that's really good if you're from a social science background and you're strong on the statistics and the research methodology, the experimentation part, that will give you good standing in terms of applying for data science job, but that's not enough. Okay, so the other thing that um, I help, was helpful for me was that when I was doing my psychology degree, I was using SPSS a lot and I became really good at um, doing sort of statistical tests in SPSS. Um, a lot of social scientists, I, I assume, I, I don't actually know actually, um, but I assume still use uh, SPSS. Um, to run statistical um, analysis, especially in psychology. I do know in psychology they still use SPSS to run statistical analysis. Um, so, you know, learn SPSS and especially the syntax element of SPSS, that will give you an idea of, of coding, of how to program stuff. Um, and then you can transfer that over to R or Python or even SQL and you'll find it, it's not that dissimilar. You just need to learn the, the grammar, the language of the programming, uh, la uh, of the coding language and, and you'll be fine. Okay, so just um, see if you're, if you, you know, build your skill set up on that um, and then the other element is that a lot of the time social sci as well for me anyway um, studying psychology helped me understand where data came from so a lot of the data we collected in psychology were questionnaires uh, but we also collected um, other types of data so for example we collected data from sensors so galvanic skin responses for example we have sensors and they tell us the galvanic skin response or we collected response data so people would you know watch for example that the Stroop test is a good example where we'd collect response data people were pressing buttons on a keypad and we'd see how long it takes to press the button okay so you so you, you get an idea of how data is collected and how um, it's not clean it's not like a neat process you know the way you design your experiment determines what kind of data you collect and that's really helpful for data science so if you're analyzing data so for example let's say you're analyzing retail data um, and you're using point of sale data as your base you, you sort of understand you can in your head conceptualize okay how is point of sale data collected so someone buys an item the barcode is scanned that gets logged into a database and you extract that and you analyze it but you also understand that sometimes in real life you know i might go to a shop i scan something and then i get a refund so that comes out or i cancel a bar well there's certain anomalies that happen and you understand that because in social science you realize that you, you, you know your test subject which are usually people don't behave as you would expect uh, more so as I suppose in physical sciences where things do sort of behave how you expect them to or they behave consistently not necessarily how you expect them to um, but in social sciences people don't necessarily behave consistently so with that understanding it really helps when you look at your data especially the other uh, the other data set is digital data so e-commerce data or, or, or website visit data Data, you know that people don't take, um, uh, don't behave in the way you expect them to behave. They do shortcuts. They do things that you wouldn't expect. And when you're analysing the data, because you can appreciate that, you can make sense of it. And so that that's another skill set that you can bring to the um, table. So yeah, so if, if you can sort of get yourself um, or uh, frame your uh, skills around the statistics, around the experimentation and research methodology, around using a statistical tool, um, especially if you can, I mean, SPSS is good to know and um, uh, you can still use it if, if, you're, uh, if the company you go into is willing to buy a license for it. Um, some of you might use SAS at university, um, but if you can learn R and Python, that's great, especially if you're at university, it, it should be an easy tool to uh, find time to do and you can replicate what you do in SPSS in R or Python um, and see if you get the same results, you should get the same results. Um, 
Yeah, and then finally, you know, your understanding of people and how they generate data, because that will be quite important for data science, so that you can understand that if you see any anomaly that lies in data, why they occur. Um, so yeah, so if, if you can just highlight those in your CV, then I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be able to become a good data scientist and apply for a data science role, um, and you know, hopefully have a great career in uh, data analytics. Thank you very much for listening to the video. Um, if you have any comments, please uh, write them down below. Again, if you have any questions, please put them also in the comment section and I'll try and answer them. Um, please like my video and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.